some things to tell you about. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that you might find interesting if you've never tried it before is going online right now and uh, joining us on Facebook Live because we're simulcasting this on Facebook Live. And the reason that you might want to uh, be able to actually watch is um, we actually have a uh, Guinness World Record uh, World Champion Sword Swallower in the studio who's going to be out at the uh, Northern Gila County Fair this weekend. He's going to be coming in with us in a little bit. That's Dan Meyer. And uh, the reason you may want to watch on Facebook is I'm going to try my best to describe what's going on on the radio. Um, but I have a feeling I'm in over my head on this one. But at any rate, uh, we're going to give it a good shot anyhow. Now, uh, with us in the studio this morning, uh, we have a number of folks uh, uh, representing Northern Gila County Fair. Uh, first of all, uh, the fair's president, Faith Lowry, with us. Uh, also, uh, uh, we have uh, Dorothy Howell. She's the exhibit manager. And um, uh, Rick, Rick, Rick uh, last name Rick again? Johnson. Johnson. And uh, Rick Johnson is the secretary <coughs> for the fair. And uh, first of all, uh, thanks to all of you for being with us this morning. I'm going to start off by uh, uh, picking on uh, uh, Dorothy here. I mean, uh, talking with Dorothy here for a minute. Um, now, how long have you been involved with the fair? I've been involved in the fair for about six, seven years. Yeah. What got you involved to begin with? I love uh, agriculture, and I've been uh, superintendent down in the fork floriculture and agriculture section right. and I just love doing that and I this year we're not going to be able to do it we've got a different program which Rich will explain to you but the thing that uh, we're doing this year is we're really pushing all the wonderful things that we do for the exhibits uh, we've, we've got all kinds of wonderful food that's going to be Ooh, food. canning <laughs> and homemade goodies and we've got people that made some beautiful photos of sunsets and everything. you got to come see You know, the photo it. exhibits at the fair are astounding at times. And I, I've been in the photography myself for uh, a number of decades. And I have to say, I'm always uh, just really astounded by the, the caliber of uh, uh, photographers that we have around Gila County. Yeah, and they're just gorgeous stuff. Even the kids get involved with the photos. And you got to right. see some of the awesome things they do. Huh. you got to come to the fair. The exhibits are all going to be up at the Tonto uh, Gym. And I hope that you can come. It'll be open Friday and Saturday from 10 to 6. And please bring the kids and let them enjoy seeing all these wonderful things. And we got a school exhibit, too. A school exhibit? Yeah, we've got second grade and other schools that are going to be t participating in the program. So everybody's got to come and see right. what, what they've done. Now, Dorothy, are you going to be swallowing any swords? <laughs> no, nah, my throat's sore today. Uh, he gave it up for lunch, right? <laughs> now, uh, uh, Rick Johnson also with us. Uh, Rick, Dorothy had mentioned that uh, things are a little different this year when it comes to some of the agricultural stuff, or what? Yes, uh, as she said, we're not going to be doing our typical exhibit uh, thing there, but we are going to do seven different contests. Huh. And we will have, a, aside, aside from a blue ribbon prize for the, for the winner, we will also have $50, either a gift certificate for um, the plant fair nursery or $50 in cash. Nice. And so that'll be you know, a nice little incentive. And there is no entry fee, so that's a real benefit there for enter, entrance. What are some of the things that people can expect to see, uh, you know, typically when it comes to this kind of thing? Well, what they'll actually see at the at the fair itself will be a TV screen, which will be scrolling all the entrants that have been put into the thing. Right. And but then on the table also in front of that will be the seven, or actually a total of ten first prize winners, because some con some of the contests have uh, have an adult and a youth thing, so there are a total of ten. Uh, ten actual winners, but seven different categories, and so there'll be eight by ten color glossies with a pair with of circles and back. arrows and a paragraph <laughs> on the back of each one. And yeah. All right. And, uh, and they all moved away from them on the group W bench. <laughs> <laughs> so those the, the winners will be displayed that way. So wow. that's and, and we will also welcome whoever wins the longest zucchini award and the heaviest pumpkin award. They they are welcome to display those two items on that same table but no other items will be physically there, it'll just be pictures. And it is pretty astounding how big some of these pumpkins and zucchinis can get. They uh, get pretty big, yes. I mean, uh, yeah. they're under a gazillion pounds. Yes, I, I'm hoping so. I don't want to have to lift that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bring in the backhoe. Now, uh, uh, can people still get uh, still enter, or are, are things pretty much closed up right now? No, uh, entrance is, is still possible, and so you can get in there. 
and, and it's all online or mostly online this year. We were, we're right. really encouraging people to do the online thing to streamline it a bit. Right. However, if you if you don't do the online thing or you don't get to it, you can come down to the gym on Wednesday, sorry Thursday or Wednesday, excuse me, between one and five thirty, and do the whole registration process. That's right today. Now. Uh, next, 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 no, no, this is this right. It's weekend after next. It's right? the ninth, right? right okay. The ninth of, of September. And so they still got plenty of time. Maybe if you're, you know, yes. growing, uh, you know, grandpa's zucchini or something like that, and you think you might have a shot. To, this is your chance. That's right. Outstanding. And uh, now there's uh, no small number of things uh, uh, to talk about uh, at the uh, Northern Gila County Fair. Uh, there's going to be uh, bands out there. There's going to be a talent show. Uh, Incidental bluegrass will be out there. Uh, a uh, bunch of the fiddlers from the Old Time uh, Fiddle Association. Uh, Fog is going to be out performing classic rock, and and uh, uh, the guys and uh, the ga guy and gals from Six Gallon Hat uh, will be out there performing as well. We just had them here in the studio this past week. Um, so lots of fun. There's going to be uh, rides. And I understand a, a complete carnival out there. So it's going to be fun for the, uh, all the kids. And you know, one of the things uh, uh, when it comes to uh, getting all of these exhibits together, uh, Dorothy. I mean, there's. It, Roughly, I mean, you give a, a rough guess number as to how many different exhibits there'll be? There'll be, be about 10 different types of exhibits. Right. And then a bunch of entries in each of those, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and we'll be taking them all in Wednesday and, and getting them set up, and then they'll be judged Thursday so everyone can come Friday and see what they want. There and maybe go. they got one of those gift certificates for the pumpkin or the Zucchini or whatever. Yeah, all right, sounds good. Now we want to talk a little bit uh, also uh, with the president of the Northern Gila County Fair, and uh, as you know, that's Faith Lowry, and Faith is with us in the studio. And while we talk to Faith, uh, uh, we want to try and, and get uh, uh, Dan Myers in here because uh, he's going to be uh, swallowing swords in just a moment, and uh, that'll be a first on radio for me anyway. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, uh, at any rate, uh, uh, Faith, when it comes to this particular uh, affair. You know, one of the challenges has been, you know, with this whole COVID-19 pandemic thing and, uh, you know, what some people think are some maybe some conflicted numbers, it seems like the Northern Gila County Fair might be one of the only fairs in the state that uh, is, you know, kind of like our world's oldest continuous rodeo. We're just going to do it. Absolutely. We're not stopping. Um, we have made some adjustments to the number of vendors and, um, you know, the town of Payson does have a limit of how many people can be in attendance at one time. Right. But luckily, since we have so many different types of venues and entertainment, they're not all at the same time, so people can enjoy it. They're also in two locations. Uh -huh. So being at, able to go and see, you know, probably about 1,500 to 2,000 exhibits over at the Tano Apache Gym, Friday and Saturday, and then also coming to the shows and the, um, there's lots of people locally who enter into the Jim Canna and the horse show people will be at the livestock auction. So there's lots of different things at the fair and they're all different times. So I don't see that the, um, I think it's about 1,100 people at one time that we can have in the arena. But, and that's, that's spread around a, a large area. So uh -huh. Now the, 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 uh, the carnival rides and stuff, is that going to be at the multi-event center? It will, it will be below the event <coughs> center in the big area where there usually you see a lot of horse parking and right. stuff like that um, but that's where it'll be so we will not will direct traffic around that area so it's safe for people and pedestrians walking back and forth but it'll be a very nice spread out lots of fun different things really cute t-shirts this year can't wait for everyone to see those and um, Debbie Steffens is also here from the Senior Center in this year in the last few years, we have done fundraising for the Payson Senior Center. They've had bake sales, and all of the dinner tickets that we're doing pre-sales for benefit the Senior Center in the um, entertainment and the, um, the the travel, the bus. I can't think of the right words today. <laughs> uh, okay, the, okay, the, the uh, not only the Meals on Wheels, but the... Uh, the transportation, transportation, thank you. Right. I got you, right. okay. Wow, so, uh, and so th uh, this being done to help raise money for a really worthy cause, one of the things, and, and we'll, we'll talk more uh, uh, with her in just a moment when she comes in, but one of the things that I, I think is uh, really interesting, and I know I've talked with Debbie uh, Steffens before about it, is 
that uh, a lot of the folks that uh, are recipients of the services of the Meals on Wheels, uh, Meals on Wheels program, uh, oftentimes the only real human interaction they get is, is when the driver comes around with their food. So I mean, this is critically important on a number of levels, not only nutritionally, but socially and everything else. Absolutely, and Debbie is so great. We're gonna have her come in and share with us and um, tell us a little bit about that program. She has just been instrumental in promoting and heading that up. She's done such a great job and we're so excited to have her here. So she's gonna come in, she's gonna share a little bit about that Thursday night, the 10th, five o'clock. Right. Come to the fair. It is our community preview night. 5.30, we have our opening ceremonies. We'll have the bake sale. This is a week from tomorrow night? Yes. Starting at seven? No. Sorry, what time? The five o'clock is when we open. 5.30 is opening ceremony. And then we have the talent show, we have the barbecue dinner, and we have um, the Meals on Wheels fundraiser for the big sale there. Right. Outstanding. And um, uh, again, uh, uh, with us in the studio, we have uh, Debbie Steffens from the uh, uh, Senior Center here in Payson. And Debbie, when it comes to, uh, obviously, uh, uh, the Senior Center, as we were just mentioning, uh, will be the recipient of some of the fundraising that goes on at this event, which is huge. But um, you know, I think people need to be reminded sometimes of, about uh, uh, the Senior Center. And I mean, first of all, you have a lot of folks that still come to the Senior Center, right? Well, right now um, we are doing delivery for our Meals on Wheels meals, and then we're also doing the pickup. We, we right. kind of say we're the new drive through in town. There you go. So our seniors just have to drive up to um, the parking lot, and we're delivering meals to them through their car. So How many meals are you are you making on a daily basis? Roughly? So during this pandemic, it's been amazing. We've actually increased our meal um, outtake to about 900 meals a week. Wow. And that is, I just want to do a shout out to the community because that's because of the people that have supported us through this pandemic um, all the way from like fundraisers um, like Pizza Factory that just recently gave us a fundraiser. I want to do a shout out to them, you know, brand new owners and they honored um, something that Rodney and I had set up in advance and um, I'm so thankful for that Beautiful. Safeway grant came through so quick and so easy to help cover some of our um, loss of revenue from our uh, thrift store that was closed for a while. So we were able to just keep things going and even growing during this pandemic. So, so I mean, that's, that's over 100 meals a day. I mean, that's, uh, yes, that's a lot. It is. And, and uh, as we were mentioning just before you came in the studio, one of the things that I don't think can be reiterated enough is the importance of uh, quite often these drivers who come out and deliver these meals uh, oftentimes are the only human interaction many of these people ever get. So, uh, yes. you know, it, it comes down to almost welfare checks and, and all kinds of other things that are done through this as well. Absolutely. I mean, um, we've shared before that our drivers have literally saved lives. Um, when someone has taken a fall and um, we were able to go in there and, and uh, call the paramedics and sit with them until they get the help that they need and so it's also emotional health too just having someone sure. that you know is going to come and check on you provide a meal um, we have some great masks for our Meals on Wheels drivers they're big lips with a big smile and uh -huh. so we still are bringing a smile to their door and so that's that's important gotta love it, gotta um, love it. now and uh, you know it's such a great cause uh, that everyone should get behind and support but one of the easiest ways to do it is just have fun going to the fair. And, uh, Faith, um, if you can uh, get back in, and we have kind of tight quarters here this morning, but um, when it comes to this, again, uh, the, the tickets for the meal that is the, the, the big fundraiser here, uh, they go on sale now? They are, they're on sale now. You can purchase them at the, tr the Trinkets gift shop on Main Street, Trinkets right next to yeah. yes. And then you can also come into Lowry's Window and Door and purchase them. They're $10. It's a barbecue dinner for Thursday night. So come, enjoy dinner, go to the bake sale, watch the talent show. The opening ceremonies is going to be super fun. We have, uh, this year we're also talking about hailing our heroes, which is uh -huh. some of the people behind the scenes, some of our veterans that have fought for us, some of the people at the hospitals and the police officers. and. You, the firemen, the people that are out on the front, front lines yep. every day fighting for all of us to give us the community that we live in. So we're celebrating them all. Wow. And that'll be at our um, grand opening ceremonies that night at 530. That's a week from tomorrow night, starting uh -huh. at 530. So uh, get on out to What does it cost for a dinner ticket? The dinner tickets <coughs> are $10. Boy, just 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. And the money goes to uh, helping uh, a great cause with the Payson Senior Center. Absolutely. Gotta love that. Now, uh, um, when it comes to, uh, just real quick here before we 
uh, switch gears and start uh, talking with Dan Myers about swallowing swords. Um, we want to also uh, uh, talk for uh, uh, just a moment again with Rick Johnson. Now, w Rick, when it comes to all of these different exhibits, did we cover, um, in, uh, there's how many different categories of exhibits? I don't know the number of categories, but it's, it's a bunch. It's probably 15 or 20 you know, right. major categories with lots of different subcategories within right. that. So there are, there are a lot of different uh, entry points there. So. Uh, we would certainly welcome people to come out and, and, and try their best of whatever it is they have. And, and, and you know, one of the neat things, too, is to just see what other people have been doing. It might give you some ideas of what you'd like to do uh, uh, this next season in your backyard. Absolutely. For those who are, you know, creative and, and are looking for different things to do, different ways to be creative, you're going to find really neat ideas, no doubt about it. And, and real quick before we switch gears, too, um, also uh, uh, just wanted to uh, revisit the topic one more time with Debbie Steffens from the Payson Senior Center. Uh, when it comes to you know people that have just been listening to what we've been talking about here as, as far as the uh, the importance of the Meals on Wheels program and, and all the different things that the senior center is involved with, if uh, somebody would like to find out more about how they can get involved or how they could maybe help volunteer, make a donation or something, what what's the best thing for them to do? Sure, um, I think just going to our website, paysonseniorcenter.org, will lead you to where you need to go. You can always call the center at 474-4876. Any uh, predictions yet on when uh, you'll be open back up for the, the typical routine that you have been doing for years? We're going to do it in phases, and we're hoping sometime after Labor Day, if things um, stay the way that they are right now. Right. Um, obviously, we are serving the most vulnerable group to this pandemic, and so um, the health and wellness of our seniors are a priority for us. Sure. They're, they're our grandmas and our grandpas. We love them like they're our family, and so that's how we treat them. Well, and they're one of the most uh, at-risk groups when it comes to COVID-19, too. Absolutely. So it's, it's good to see you know what you're doing to make sure you're yes. keeping everybody safe. And we do have a lot of things on Zoom and online, and I, I just if I could just do a quick shout-out, too. We had a wonderful donor that donated... Um, enough funds for us to purchase 15 iPads. Wow. So we're going to start a new program called Senior Center Without Walls. And so we're going to give the homebound these iPads with some instructions and help. That's a great um, idea. So they're going to be able to join in on bingo and Zoom classes and even connect with each other. And so we're breaking the walls of isolation through technology. So this pandemic really pushed us to think outside of the box and I think to even improve our homebound um, even when we get back to normal reality, our homebound is still homebound. What an amazing thing. Uh, 15 new iPads. Yes. And uh, just a single donor out there made the, uh, the contribution to make that possible. We had one large um, donation from one donor and then two others that donated two iPads. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, yeah. I, I mean, uh, that's, that, I'm going to... It's exciting. I want to follow up on that and Absolutely. find out how that went because that, yes. that sounds like a, a perfect solution. So yes. keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you, you for supporting us. We want to say thank you to the um, fair for all of their support and their efforts <coughs> to um, keep our wheels going with transportation and our Meals on Wheels. Uh, thank you for all the good work you do. Just keep up the good work. Thank and, you. And uh, now we're going to switch gears here, and uh, uh, we're going to have a couple of our folks uh, step out, and also uh, uh, next, uh, I'm going to have Dan Myers, uh, Dan Meyer, excuse me, come in. And now you may have seen Dan Meyer before. Dan Meyer has been on uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, he's done a TED Talk. He's been on Ripley's Believe It or Not on the Today Show. He's a uh, uh, the Guinness World Record World Champion Sword Swallower. And uh, um, I have to say, uh, Dan, I've, I've never had the opportunity to uh, uh, to talk to a professional sword swallower, let alone a world champion. And, and uh, we were talking just before the show today about what it was like to be on America's Got Talent, but uh, you've not only been on America's Got Talent, but you've uh, uh, done these uh, talent shows in a number of other countries as well. Yeah, I, uh, I did America's Got Talent twice, 2008 and 2016. Right. And then got invited to do Italy's Got Talent in Rome in 2016. Wow. France's Got Talent in Paris in 2017, and Italy's, or Israel's Got Talent. Wow. <coughs> and this year I was supposed to have done Australia's Got Talent, Germany's Got Talent, Romania's Got Talent, and Georgia's got talent and the Olympics all this year, and of course that kind of got coveted out, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Romania is an amazing. But now I'm honored to be here with you guys here in Payson. Here, well, we're we're honored to have you here. So I got to ask, when did you first think to yourself, you know, I I think I'll try swallowing a sword? I mean, that's not something that a lot of us you know, no. really come to that thought process. Everybody asked me, they said, did you just wake up one day and decide to swallow a sword? Like, no, not at all. First 20 years of my life, I grew up in extreme fear. I grew up in northern Indiana, 
I suffered from low self-esteem, inferiority complex, and something called social anxiety disorder. Right. So I couldn't talk. I would shake and stutter and tremble. And so the bullies would tease me and beat me up. So the first 20 years of my life, I was kind of teased and beat up by the bullies. Right. And I vowed if they wouldn't let me play in their sports games that I wanted to do real magic, real feats, do things the other kids could not do. I wanted to be like a superhero, like Superman, fly around the world doing superhuman feats and saving right. lives. In 1997, I heard there were less than a dozen sword swallowers left in the entire world. Wow. And I had been a Lutheran missionary in India in, in the 70s. And so I had been in South India, a place called uh, Andhra Pradesh, which is where sword swallowing started 4,000 years ago. So I saw one of the last of the Indian sword swallowers there in India when I was 20 years old. So here I am at 40. I'm working in the music business in Nashville. And I thought, I've got to try that. So I began practicing practice in my bathroom 10 to 12 times a day, every day for four years, about 14,000 unsuccessful attempts. I won't ask why it was in the bathroom. Um, good good, <laughs> quest, good I, question. I can guess, though. Uh, I never did throw up, you know, uh, but just practice a lot. And after four years, I finally got my first sore down February 12, 2001. Wow. And then I started touring with Brooks and Dunn and started doing the Ripley's and the Guinness right. and founded the Sword Swallowers Association. And now it's taken me to 50 countries around the world and all the way up here to Payson, Arizona. So is it uh, with the, the practice that led you to uh, eventually being able to do this, I'm assuming that it's a matter of being able to shut off that gag reflex? It's both. It's mental, it's, it's physical, and to, for me it's even spiritual. It takes kind of overcoming the, the gag reflex physically in the body, uh, muscle memory in the body, and then for me even just a kind of a pride reflex to, to learn how to, to do something that other people can't do, but make it entertaining and right. fun and comedy and and something that's family friendly. So, Well, I tell you, you, uh, you, you piqued my interest especially when you mentioned being in the Andhra Pradesh province of India. I've spent a lot of time uh, between uh, Vaishaka Putnam and Bhima Varam, and uh, uh, especially after the 2004 Indonesian tsunami, and got to know a lot of folks there. but. Uh, I didn't run into any sword swallowers while I was there. So We've got one in Telangana, really? and he just sent me a video last night. We're, we're good friends. He doesn't speak much English, but he still speaks Telugu. And then I lived in Andhra, in, uh, in Madras, in oh. Tamil Nadu, which okay. is now Chennai, right. in South India. But I've been, I, get, I go back to India usually once or twice a year and perform at different colleges and universities, right. and Nepal and everything. It's very cool. It's a blast. It's fun. And the neat thing is the sword swallowing translates no matter what culture, it, it kind of over transcends bound, you know, right. l languages, whatever. I can go in the slums in Ecuador or Thailand or India or whatever, and people still get it. You right. know, their, their eyeballs pop open. So I imagine. And, but yours don't. No. <laughs> uh, they water. My eyes water sometimes. <laughs> I can imagine. Water. Now, the, uh, uh, how long are these swords that you swallow? They're, uh, the minimum, uh, I run the Sword Swallowers Association. Our minimum is 16 inches. You have to be able to swallow a 16 inch blade first in order to get into the association. But most of ours run 20 to 24 inches, 25 inches. I've got one that's a 38 incher that I swallowed once on Stanley's Superhumans on, on History Channel, which is wow. fun. But it was heated to 1500 degrees red hot. That was kind of the, my, my blacksmith lowered it down into me. It was glowing red hot. And, uh, oh my goodness! It was it was kind of interesting, yeah. <laughs> it was a once kind in a life interesting deal. is one way you could say that. I can think of a few others. Um, wow, that uh, uh, that has got to be fantastic to watch. Now you're going to be performing at the Northern Hill County Fair, right? Mm -hmm. And and how long is your performance? My show is usually about 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, I've been really blessed. I I'm studying comedy in Phoenix, right. and I live in Mesa right now. And I've got. Uh, a, a buddy of mine who is a comedian down there, and he's offered to come up and uh, open for me for about 10 or 12 minutes. Oh, great. A clean comedian. He's called the Comic Cop. His name is Jim Perry. So he'll be opening for me for about 15, 10 or 12 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I'll be doing about a 45 minute show. So I think we're on about 5.30 on Friday night, 5.30 to 6.30. Yeah, ish. and then Saturday also. Saturday, I think 2.30 to 3.30 or something. So Friday so. evening, Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you get out to the Northern Gila County Fair. Again, that's uh, weekend after next. And uh, uh, Dan Meyer will be uh, uh, performing there. Uh, now, you're not going to be going for setting any new records uh, at the fair, are you? 
I think this will be the only fair in Arizona that's up and running, and as far as I know, the only fair that I've got on my schedule for this year. Well, it'll be the state record, record this year. So it'll be a record for, <laughs> right, for all of us here. Again, so. uh, uh, it's been on uh, uh, a number of not only America's Got Talent, but uh, Italy and and uh, uh, Israel's Got Talent, uh, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records. I thought in Italy it was just uh, pasta swallowers was about all that. Yeah, yeah, there's there's some of those. Yeah. Well, anyway, now so now you you are willing to uh, uh, show us a little bit of sure. uh, what you got going on? All right. I'll do a little demo here for you. Uh, if you can, Faith, I'm going to let you reach into that bag there and choose your weapon. Just pick any weapon. I think I've got the, the car axle with me. If, if you watch America's Got Talent, that's where I pulled Nick Cannon in a car across the stage. And that has kind of become my trademark. Wow. But I swallowed this car axle, 1929 Model A car axle that I swallowed. No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's you a swallowed a, a car No, the, the longest sword you can find in there. Just grab a, a long sword. Yeah, that probably did. That'll work for here. Now, so uh, you know, and uh, again, you can watch live right now on Facebook uh, with us to, to actually watch this. But uh, we're talking about a sword here that, what is that? Uh, about uh, thirty inches? No, know. it's about twenty twenty-two inches. Okay. Of blade, and uh, it looks like the blade itself is uh, about an inch and a half across, um, and uh, I, man, I, I, this this whole thing just uh, amazes me that. Uh, I mean that you know I've often wondered when it came to sword swallowers. Okay, there's got to be a hitch. This this is a you know, recoiling blade or something like that. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a solid. That's piece what of everybody steel. thinks. This one is yeah. solid give steel. It, give it a go, Randy. Give yeah. it a go. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it's okay. I, I mean, <laughs> we, we I'm just working much, on swallowing coffee. Today. <laughs> we don't have much headroom here, so I'm going to try and do this one sitting down. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good. Here, I'll well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll swap your places. Faith is all of a sudden doesn't have any faith. No, no, you're not. Stay right over here. That's all right. I'm no, just we're trying. We're going to gonna keep you. We're going to keep you in the in the frame here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to swallow this down. What I have to do is put it over the tongue. When I get to the back of the throat, I have to repress the gag reflex. That's the number one reflex. Right. Then navigate a 90 degree turn down the cervical esophagus here. Go through the cricopharyngeal upper esophageal sphincter. Right. Repress the gag reflex here in the in the, the throat. What, what kind of sphincter? The cricopharyngeal upper esophageal oh, sphincter. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. That's um, the first one. <laughs> then when I get down in between my lungs, I actually have to nudge my heart to the left. So if you watch carefully, you can see the blade beat with my heart like this. Nudge my heart over to the left. It slides past the heart between the lungs. Then I have to go through the lower esophageal sphincter. That's a tough one to learn. It took me several months to get that one to relax and, and go th through that. Pass the liver and kidneys down into the stomach, all the way to the bottom of my stomach. If I go further than that, all the way down to my fallopian tubes. Wow. Somebody outside laughed at yeah, that one. Well, I'm, like, that one. I, I, I'm not a health major, but I didn't I, I know you had those. I, I wasn't <laughs> sure what, uh, what was coming next after that. But. So I'm glad that you can relax during all this, because I don't think I'm going to have any part of me relax. But Okay, so you have to so, lick the blade and kind of get things Lick wet. it to lubricate it. I also feel for nicks and burrs so it doesn't snag inside me and fish hook. Yeah, but not and, good. Yeah, and warm it up to body temperature. Okay. And then I'm going to try and slide this one down here. Now, it's been a few months since I've gotten a sword down, so this will be kind of a, a new experience here today. And then, Faith, I'm going to ask you to, to for on behalf of everybody on, on TV watching here or on the video, to verify that it is real, first of all, that it's a real sword, right? I did. I pulled it out. Okay. It's, it's real. Not yet you have it. Well, when I get down this way, I'm going to lean this way, it. and you're going to pull it out. I can't do that. <laughs> you, you can do it. <laughs> no, if I, I can really, swallow it, you can pull it out. No, I really can't. No, well, I really can't. Are you right-handed or left-handed? <laughs> are, are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Good, okay. So it's just easy. You just grab piece, a little, little piece of cake. Piece of cake. That's right. I'll try not to pass out because no. I'm not really good with that. <laughs> Dan Myers has a, 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 a diet of heavy metals. Um, That's right. I'm on a high iron diet. Here you go. All right. So here we'll we go. see if the, we get this one down. Here we go. All right. Guacamole. Wow. Wow. Wait, that wasn't down. That hit my lower esophageal sphincter. Randy, I hate you it have when to pull it out. I hate it That's when they hit the lower esophageal sphincter. That's I, 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 I have all this equipment in the way. Randy. <laughs> I'm trying to find Faith a heavier sword. Here we go. You do it. I've got Debbie's going to do it. No, no, no. Faith, come on here. No, Here's really, you. no, really. I will pass out. <laughs> That's I, okay. No, Debbie, you can't do it. It's okay if you pass out. Debbie, 
All right, Debbie's going to come into that. I'll pull the sword out. She has her surgical mask. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have enough balls? Stick it back in there again. Yeah. I'm trying to find a little heavier sword. This is so cool. You've got to find a heavier sword. So, Debbie, well, you're not nervous at all about this, are you? You're, you're excited. I just don't feel that one. That's real. Sure it's real. It's yeah. like the bed, blade's not going to No, that's bend, real. Curl. It's good. Real. See, this, for some reason, my lower esophageal sphincter didn't. And one thing you learned, don't push. So I didn't yeah, push I, it. I, yeah. I, 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 okay. I give it this Tell me how, how to pull it out, though, first. So I'm going to lean this way. I'll kind of lean towards you first. Lean Can towards I stand it. and pull you it? You can stand this? and pull it out. Let's see. Does it right matter angle? Right. Or? Yeah, just whatever you do. Don't go like this, okay? <laughs> yeah. Whatever you do, don't push, okay? Don't These are push new jeans. I don't want to have no to go back to the buckle. Okay. Okay. Just, okay. Pull right. it straight up. Okay. okay. All right. I can do that. All right. All right. Here we go. Dan Myers uh, going for his second straight sword. Oh. And I'm suddenly thinking I'm going to skip lunch. And oh, that's so cool. That's that's amazing. Pull it out. Slash scary. Oh All gosh. Right. So and and out it comes again. <laughs> Oh yeah! yeah. 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 That's uh, now nice. you want to see her swallow this sword? Yeah, 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 yeah. Debbie's yeah. my hero. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for not killing me. Wow. You're my hero. That's <laughs> um, uh, certainly a first for Rim Country uh, radio. radio. Uh, oh yeah. When it comes to that, like that's it. Uh, uh, but uh, and, and thanks to those of you that have uh, uh, come along with us on uh, social media on uh, Facebook Live to watch this. Um, I have always, uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a, you know, a skeptic, a bit of a pessimist and, and that type of thing, but I've always, you know, I believe I, I saw you on America's Got Talent. I saw you through the camera. Yeah, I was that <laughs> little guy way back there. Anyway, um, I've always thought that there's got to be a hitch. I mean, there's something funky about the sword or whatever. Um, I'm sitting right here in front of you. There's nothing funky going on. You, you actually swallowed a sword. Pretty real sword. Um, Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, have there have there been any times where, you know, you you've gone, oh, I shouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. In 2005, I punctured my stomach while swallowing five swords at once, and ended up in the hospital. Yeah. Almost killed myself. Because one yeah. sword isn't enough. No, that's right. You're right. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, I was kind of. I had just learned to do multiple swords the week before. I was kind of showing off, and that's one thing you got to get rid of the pride. You cannot be. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. Yeah. Five years later, 2010, I was in Rome, Italy, doing Guinness World Record TV for swallowing swords underwater, and I was swallowing two swords at once underwater, and I punctured my esophagus up here and ended up in the hospital in Rome for a few weeks, and they would not let me out, and it was kind of crazy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And then now, I got to ask real quick, sorry to interrupt. No, no. You're swallowing swords underwater. Your mouth is open. You're sticking something all the way down to around your stomach. Yep. And you're doing it underwater. Yep. Now that... I, I did it in a tank of 88 sharks and stingrays for root Oh, oh yeah, because otherwise they'd just be boring. It would have been ah. boring. Ah. Nice up a little bit, yeah. So, Holy moly. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, how do you keep from drowning? I mean, I would think that, uh, uh, you know, you, the same pipe that uh, it goes down to your stomach also has a little offshoot to the lungs there. How, how are you doing it? Um, I, the, kind of the backstory behind that, the way we came up with it, I had lived on a little island in the Bahamas for seven years right. in a thatch hut wearing a loincloth, wearing sharks and stingrays. So I, I knew I could swim with sharks. I'd swum with sharks for seven years. I'd been swallowing swords at that time for seven years, so I knew I could swallow swords, but I didn't know if I could put the two of them together and do both of them. So that's how we pulled it off of Ripley's. And when I opened my mouth, all the air went out, the air went up, but the water didn't go in past my epiglottis. I don't know how this sword, how it worked, but it, it actually does does work. Wow. And uh, I did that. Uh, God is good. God is good. <laughs> and then I did it for for Ripley's ball, uh, Myrtle Beach, and then I did it for Guinness World Record TV in Rome, Italy. Oh, and now they want me to do it in Italy, uh, in the ocean, with a tank, with a bunch of sharks and on a tank in well, back I think, in Rome. You know, I think I could swim with sharks because I've known a lot of lawyers, but <laughs> but swallowing swords while swimming with sharks, that just, uh, um, I, yeah. I never drank that much. And then in, in 2013, my one of my worst injuries was, I was trying to break the Guinness World Record, which was at that time was 22 swords. So I was at Ripley's oh. St. Augustine, and I did 29 swords <gasps> at once. And I got them down, but I couldn't eat solid, swallow solid food for like three or four weeks after that. I mean, it just really kind of tore up my esophagus a little bit. Right. Um, 
Bad way to diet. Bad way to diet, yes. Ooh. And that's why he's the world champion. Uh, wow. Two years ago. How many swords at one time? 29. 29. Two years ago, my best buddy in Germany uh, was doing 20 swords at once, and he punctured his esophagus, and he was in a, a coma for oh, no. 10 days. He was in the hospital in Munich for five weeks, six weeks. But other and than that, almost some time? Uh, no. Yeah. He, his parents were ticked at him and ticked at me. And I went over for his wedding last year. We both got to perform at Oktoberfest in Munich, which was oh, wow. fun. A lot of fun. But uh, so it is. It's it is extremely dangerous. Do not try this at home or Do anywhere not else. Try this anywhere, <laughs> Payson, anywhere. Uh, it is extremely. We've had twenty nine people that have died from yeah. swords long age. And tempting though as it may be to swallow around uh, a bunch of live sharks that you may be swimming with, I wouldn't do that either. No, um, that's right. You can find live sharks in, in Arizona. There you go. Now, uh, um, <laughs> we've got to be another lawyer joke there somewhere. Uh, again, uh, uh, Dan Meyer, uh, Guinness World Record holder, world champion sword swallow, will be performing at the Northern Gila County Fair uh, both on uh, uh, Friday evening and again on Saturday afternoon. So you're going to want to make sure that you get out and check this out. Tr a truly amazing, enter I mean, world-class entertainment that's coming right here to the Northern Gila County Fair. Uh, you may have seen him on uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. and, and uh, 29 swords. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing that here. You know, I'm not going to go for the 30, no. 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 So you're, you're just, what, keep it under 25? I'm just, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're just going to have fun, right? Oh, but then we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> and there's going to be a, a whole bunch of fun at the Northern it's, Gila County Fair again coming up weekend after next. And uh, there's just between uh, all of the, the bands performing, uh, again, uh, uh, Incidental Bluegrass, uh, Old Time Fiddlers Association folks, uh, Classic Rock from Fog, uh, the Six Gallon Hat, uh, uh, the guys and uh, guy and gals from Six Gallon Hat will be in there, uh, a lot of rides at the carnival, and uh, just a whole bunch of fun. Uh, so make sure you get on out there. And in fact, at the carnival, it uh, looks like you're going to have a roller coaster, uh, an elephant. It's the spinning elephant. Oh, so like <laughs> okay. You don't want him to get sick. Yeah. No. yeah then, swallowing swords. then you'll have junk in the trunk. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, uh, yeah, cars. That's a bad joke. Uh, they have all kinds of Star Trooper, Sizzler, Tornado, Ferris Wheel, Zipper, Slide, and uh, Lupo Lane. I, I'm going to go out there just to find out what that is. So make sure you check it out weekend after next. And when you're out there, again, either uh, Friday evening or a Saturday afternoon, make sure you check out the performance from uh, Dan Meyer, his buddy, opening up with a comedy act there. It's going to be just a bunch of fun and really world-class talent at uh, this year's uh, Northern Gila County Fair. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, everyone that's come out here today. Uh, uh, Dorothy Howell, uh, the, the exhibit manager for the fair. Also, uh, uh, Rick Johnson, the secretary. And, and <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, not to mention Faith Lowry, the president. We appreciate you being here. And, of course, uh, uh, from the Payson Senior Center, uh, Debbie Steffens. Uh, and, and, again, if you, uh, if you want to find out more about what they have going on, just check out PaysonSeniorCenter.org, and they've got all the details for you there. Uh, meanwhile, get on out to the Northern Gila County Fair, and I've got a, I'm, I live down in the Tunnel Basin. I'm going to drive up just to, uh, to be able to check out uh, Dan Meyer's show because to see it right here in front of me in the studio, it's uh, kind of mind-blowing, and I think I still have a couple brain cells left, so I'm going to try and see if I can't take care of both of those this next weekend, too. Thank you all for being with us. Appreciate it Thank very you. much. Thank you. We've got to get you back to more of your favorite music. As a matter of fact, uh, got some great tunes coming up from uh, Tracy Chapman, Fleetwood Mac, Phil Collins, David Bowie, and more, but first, a quick look at what you can expect in the way of weather.